Then we got someone named Corey Kent. Uh, Corey Kent. So Corey does have him a website, but it doesn't look like it has a bio on it. So I will check Spotify. I like the little bio section on Spotify. Normally it's filled in. So he's from Bixby, Oklahoma, Nashville, and Dallas, Texas. Uh, okay, the, the press release writer is really doing the most here. So he's got the small town charm of Bixby in the lyrics, the big city energy of Dallas in the live set, and the power of Nashville in the vocals. Okay, he was part of a Western swing band that sang songs by like the Oak Ridge Boys. And I saw just from Googling, it looks like he's been on The Voice at some point, so who knows? But he's got this one song that has nine million streams called Wild As Her, and that's gonna be the one that I am checking out today. I think I might know this song from TikTok. I keep the windows down and the wind in hair, keep her heart hanging. Okay, so my first thought on that song is much like uh, Bailey Zimmerman. That definitely reminds me of like the Morgan Wallen sound kind of, and, and that rock influence is clearly kind of cool among this next generation. I feel like, you know, five years ago, everyone was trying to sound more like Sam Hunt, and it was all like really slick and poppy, and now I'm like, okay, this next generation, they wants to rock out. So maybe Big Loud is onto something with their kind of Big Loud rock imprint. Um, I did look up the songwriters of that, uh, and Morgan Wallen's one of them, so I guess this is a Morgan Wallen cut. Corey's not on this. It's Brett Tyler, Kelly Archer, and Morgan Wallen. I'm not seeing some label in any of his bio or anything, so I am wondering, you know, how did you land this random Morgan Wallen cut? That's a question I got, but he's got a cool voice. It's like a little bit, um... It's not as raspy as like Bailey's was earlier in the video. I really do like the refrain of that song. It, it works weirdly to just say wild loudly, like wild, wherever that note goes. Um, like, that actually is kind of weird and different. And it's weird because I definitely recognize that bridge of I ain't trying to fix her, all that stuff. That's the sound that's popular on TikTok. It is not where I thought it would be in the song. I, that, that's what's weird about TikTok sounds sometimes is you get an idea in your head that that's the main refrain. And then when you hear the song, you're like, oh, that's not really how I would have placed that. Yeah, he's repped by WME, which is a huge agency. So I don't know. Maybe he's doing the independent thing. I don't know. I don't know how you get a Morgan Wallen cut like that. But it also looks like he does write for a lot of people and for himself. I'm looking at his bio and he's got some William Clark Green cuts, Colby Cooper, Brandon Jenkins. So it seems like maybe he is playing more the Parker McCollum route of kind of being quasi Texas and Nashville at the same time, which would be smart to do. And if you can keep it independent and not have to sign the big deals, this could be the new model. So... You know, I'm getting, this is like becoming a business freaking video, but, but that's, I guess, my first impressions of Corey Kent. Then I want to check out Chase Beckham, and I think I actually talked about him once on the channel before. He had a song called, Now I'm 23. Wow, he's going to have this same freaking voice, isn't he? Simple as my mama said when I was very young. That is the cool voice right now. Um, sorry, I just remembered that he had a song called 23, so he probably shouldn't be on this list because I've actually talked about him before, but whatever. I know he won American Idol, I think. I know he has a song with um, Lindsay L right now, but there's this other song called Doing It Right that I just got sent a bunch of times, so that is what I'm going to check out today. I don't know. That, I mean, hmm. Hmm. Why did y'all all tell, send me this song? Did you think I was gonna love this song? What the heck? The Valley of Blah has claimed another victim. I feel like this is the, the very difficult road to navigate when you're a new artist and everyone in the industry is like, we need you to have a radio hit. You make a song that sounds just like everything else on radio. And it actually had some kind of cool lyrics when you he was describing kind of being out from California, but uh, then it just went into kind of the slow, mid-tempo electric guitar behind it, the kind of checklist chorus, and it just feels like the, the boring radio hit in, in every way different than the super interestingness of that first song, 23. Yeah, listen to this. Oh my gosh. Chase, 
Uh, he'll probably have to learn how to advocate for himself, I think, within the label. And they're, they're going to be saying, no, you need to do this. You need to have a radio hit. But that's a bummer. Um, I don't want to be a, a dick. It's just like, I felt like 23 was so special. That's the only thing I remember saying is just, wow, this is not what I would have expected the winner of American Idol to sound like. And now this is exactly what I would expect the winner of American Idol to sound like. You know, just have to have to put out some kind of boring radio friendly single. He's got a crazy good voice. That's the thing. Next up is a girl named Megan Maroney. And a, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of dudes have been sending me Megan Maroney actually. And I actually think I follow her on TikTok. I've actually seen that she has some song going viral and I wanted, to, I knew I was like, no, I want to do a video about people taking off. People are sending me her. So I've been like skipping it and really not listening, but it's called Hair Salon. Squeeze me. This is the one. I mean, yes, yes, that song's awesome. I mean, every every word of it, every inch of it, is kind of like putting you in a place, and it's uh, it just feels lived in. It feels real. There's words that you would use in your in a hair salon in the song. You start off with the brassy roots and she's getting them touched up and she's talking about going blonde and then uh, she's kind of getting a haircut but it's really about the gossip but it's like, uh, it's a little bit shady but it's not mean and she's heartbroken and you hear the things about the people that won state and how someone's mama's uh, husband is cheating or, or, or whatever it was. You know, the, the, you get all the little... I'd have to listen to it more times to remember the exact drama but you get the real names and it just is like... Yes, yes. I felt like I was just on that experience with her. Um, I felt like that is, it just works. And her persona, you know, she's got the bleach blonde hair and she's singing about going blonde. Like that works too. Uh, looking at the credits, she wrote that. There's four writers credited. Ben Williams, Mackenzie Carpenter, her, and Micah Carpenter. So I don't know if that's like a couple or a brother or sister or something, but, um, and produced by Christian Bush of Sugarland fame. Interesting. It looks like Christian Bush is helping make this happen along with someone named Julie Griffith. I guess that's how this works when you're a young artist. You just find kind of those benefactors that believe in you and, and help make your music and pay for things before you can really do it yourself. But I think this is gonna get a lot of attention. That's a great song. That's like a Lori McKenna song. It's so good. She's got a cool voice, very husky. Who does her voice remind me of? I don't know. She's an unusual voice. I can't think of who this reminds me of. I can see Jamie Lynn Wilson singing this song down in Texas. Weirdly, the person that's coming to mind when I think of this is uh, Maggie Antone. Put your toes down in the water and a smile across your face. Also from TikTok, their voices are not similar, but I just think like they just both they are just two women from TikTok. I really believe in their talent. Uh, if you don't follow Maggie, you should. It's a cool freaking song. Also, I definitely forgot to read her bio at the beginning, but she's from Georgia and uh, went to University of Georgia and she grew up in a musical household. <laughs> not, not the most illuminating bio, but um, oh, crazy picture though. She's got like diamonds on her eyes. That song rules, very impressed. Okay, last person I'm gonna listen to, and you know, this one's a little bit of a cheat too, because I've talked about it in a TikTok video before, but Warren Ziders. Zaders, Ziders, I just still don't know how to say it. I know I talked about him with Muscadine Bloodline a little because he originally blew up singing Porch Swing Angel, which led Gary from Muscadine Bloodline uh, to do this impression. I made it his own thing. Like, <laughs> did. He kind of like made it his own thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And currently, Warren is this like Rorschach test where half the people that watch his videos think he's amazing and then half the people kind of shade them and are like, dude, this is cringe. Why are you sitting in a shower telling us to pre-save your song and pouring whiskey on your eyes? But he's got a crazy good voice. That said, I've never actually listened to a recorded song by him. I've seen a bunch of little live TikTok performance videos, and I've seen him lip sync the same 15 seconds of a bunch of his songs, but let's give the song Wild Horse a real full listen. Spend my life chasing a wild, wild horse. 
Okay, that's another example of a song on TikTok where I I had placed the sound wrong. I kind of figured the chorus was, and it's time to move along, I guess. The da, 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 like whatever it is, and really, and it's time to move along, I guess, is kind of the end of the verse going into the chorus. Turned all the bridges, left in my life, ain't come back again. So that threw me off at first, but that guy's got a crazy good voice. That video looks like Yellowstone. It sounds so good. Like, I love the production on it. I just looked. It's produced by Eddie Spear, who worked with Dave Cobb for a long time. He's worked on Zach Bryan's uh, Quiet Heavy Dreams. It says that this was licensed to YouTube uh, by Warner Records. Warner Records is the same label that Zach Bryan is now on. Um, it's kind of part of Warner, but it's not. It's like out of LA, not Nashville. It's not Warner Music Nashville. Um, and yeah, his vocal sounds great. I know everyone loves the big belty stuff, but I think the best part of that song is, it's time to move along, I guess. Da -da 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 -da. And he gets quiet. I leave behind. Everything I love, I leave behind. And it gets like a way, way more delicate. To me, the contrast of delicate and strong is much more interesting than just the loud belting. And I think he's learning that. You know, it used to be on YouTube, he would only yell stuff. And so, um, I think that sounds really pretty. I don't know that it feels lived in so much. Maybe it feels a little bit like dress up. Maybe that's just because, you know, I, I don't actually know any dudes that wear like an ascot, but it's a good song. I mean, it's a pretty song. And I'm interested to see where Warren goes. I feel like he's walking this fine line right now where he's kind of making the credibility play with some of the people he chooses to work with and the types of songs that he covers. Uh, to go for the more snobby indie country fans. And yet there's this feeling of production around him that those types of fans are very allergic to because they're like, no, this is the kind of corporate mass production stuff I want to avoid and why I'm tuning out radio. And so how do you be a TikTok star influencer type and yet try to go for the red dirt crowd? Will it work? I don't know. But the guy's got a voice and that cannot be denied. Geez, I've been filming a long time. This was fun to listen to eight songs I'd never heard before and kind of get introduced to some artists. I'm leaving this video most intrigued by William Beckman and Megan Maroney. I mean, those were just two real standout tracks for me and I'm excited. I'm gonna add those to my playlist after I'm done. Or I don't know if Williams is even new, but Megan certainly is. And um, it was cool to get intro to all these artists. They all are obviously quite talented and they're doing something great and good for them. Uh, but those are my two, my two babies. And I feel so predictable sometimes, but that's my taste. Thank you for all your recommendations that you guys are always giving me. I see all your comments that you want me to talk about all these new albums and just, I'll get to them when I get to them, okay? Um, <laughs> anyway, that's all. That's this whole video. Thank you.